Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight, the showdown is set in Cat Island as a newcomer to politics is set to take on the PLP leader in the next election. Meanwhile, satellite passport officers coming to the family islands and a Super Bowl snack you won't want to miss. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, one businesswoman, a descendant of Cat Island, has her eyes set on the constituency of Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador and hopes to be the area's next MP. Only thing is, she has to take down Philip Davis, who's held that seat since 2002. Kyle Joaquin has more. A businesswoman and just a natural competitor, Felicia Knowles says she's up to the big challenge and will go head to head with PLP leader Philip Dave Davis in the upcoming general election. If, if your heart and you were rooted for Cat Island, San Salvador and Rumkey, don't speak it, do it. And I am um, putting my, I put my name in the hat. I was ex accepted because I, he don't want to do it. I'll do it. Running on the Free National Movement's ticket, Felicia Antoinette Knowles is stepping into the ring looking to win over a PLP stronghold. After being ratified as the FNM's candidate for Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador last week, Knowles says while some may consider running against the PLP leader a mammoth task, she's up to the challenge. And here it is, Cat Island, that was once the pulse of our nation. And we does, it, 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 it currently does not speak to that. And it doesn't speak to somebody who has grown up in that island and has represented the island from um, 2002. He has had leadership roles, you know, no excuses, you know, um, no more promises. Knowles considers herself a natural born competitor, making the women's national basketball team at the age of 14. And while she says some have criticized her decision to challenge Davis in a PLP stronghold, she sees it as a competition where the best man or woman for the job will win. I am definitely in for the fight. Um, it, Brave is not a stranger to my family. We, 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 we would call him cousin and um, he would call me cousin. But at the end of the day, um, we need to take Kid Allen back. The great-granddaughter of a Guyanese slave who moved to Kid Island, Knowles, known by many as Antoinette, has deep roots on the island. Her grandmother, Drusilla Ferguson Dorset, was the island's midwife for years and delivered many of Cat Island's residents. You have my, my mom and my aunts who, who, was, who came to Nassau, worked, but decided in their early 40s that they were going back home to, to bring another, um, um, to, to, to boost the restaurant business. So they were like the second restaurant when they went back home about 20 something years ago. Now there are many other restaurants in Cat Island. She said spending all her summer breaks on Cat Island gave her some of her fondest childhood memories. But she said she's seen residents there go through enough suffering, which is why the insurance executive has decided to put her hat in the ring. But PLP leader and the island's MP, Philip Davis, said if residents are going through any suffering, it's the fault of the current Minutes administration. The suffering that, he, that is now being experienced in that constituency is not about my representation, but rather about the man in which this government has decided not to do anything for that constituency. And in fact, I go as far as to say to punish the constituency. Davis has served as that area's MP since 2002 and says he's proud of the strides made. I am, I am satisfied with my representation of my people. I have done a lot for the islands that I represent. Most of the infrastructure and the conveniences that are presently enjoyed in those constituencies were, at my, uh, were all uh, constructed and came about but, but through my initiative and under my watch. Well, as she begins her run, Knowles had this message for her family and friends in Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador. I am coming for us to be a team and take our island back. For Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. National Security Minister Marvin Dame says government is still working to fight corruption in the public sector and public institutions. He says the current government campaigned on an anti-corruption message and is still trying to fulfill the promise. I'm a nationalist. I'm always concerned when my country is painted in a negative light. That's, that's you know, if you're behaving, you don't always be concerned. But what is more important is that what, what do we do about it? 
how do how do we how do we get from this point moving forward? And as a government, one of the things uh, that we said before, you know, before coming into office, is that we would begin to to take on this uh, public sector corruption. Dame says government is still working to clean up institutions. To take on corruption in government, to take on corruption in, in the public service, uh, to clean up our, um, our institutions, and, and we're committed to that. Uh, we still have a, a, a significant amount of work ahead of us, um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we have to continue to press on, because it's all about, it's all about you know, cleaning up this country's reputation to future generations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is in the process of opening passport offices on several family islands, according to Minister of Foreign Affairs, Darren Henfield. Henfield said an office will be set up in Exuma by next week. Next week, uh, Friday, it is anticipated that the Prime Minister and I, in furtherance of our policy to, to establish passport offices and make it more accessible for behemoths all across the country to be able to access, access and get their passports, we're going to open an office in George. Georgetown Exuma, um, which, which will allow uh, behemoths uh, or people in Exuma the same amenities as you have in New Providence or as we have in Abaco. Family islands further south are also expected to get offices soon. It is also in, envisioned that in the very uh, near future we're going to do the same thing in Matthew Town in Anagua and Brent Ground somewhere in, in Long Island. Uh, we're also going to do the same thing in Governor's Harbor in Luther. We think this is, is very important. Me, as an island boy, believe it is extremely important as the Minister of Foreign Affairs responsible for passports that I be able to make passports accessible uh, to family islanders. Elizabeth MP Dr. Duane Sands said he's continuing to work with his constituents who are hard hit by the pandemic. He's been canvassing the area on Saturdays providing food and listening to the concerns of those residents. We have now I believe almost made it to just shy of 20,000 bags of groceries. The exact number probably 17 plus thousand but um, people need to eat. We also make sure that children have access to tablets uh, so that they can uh, get their education. Some of the other things like clearing down um, vacant properties and dealing with drainage challenges and so on and so forth, that's continued. But for the most part, it is scratching the itch that people say they have. As the election slate starts to roll out, Dr. Sands says he does plan to run with the FNM in the next election, adding that he's committed to continuing to serve his constituents. In a moment of reflection, I'd like to believe that um, I've certainly uh, done a good job or a reasonable job. Uh, certainly, the response that I've gotten on the ground seems to reflect that opinion. There are some people that uh, have a different view, uh, but Dwayne Sands has given his all and he will continue to do so. Uh, if given the opportunity. And you are going to run in that constituency? I will run in the Elizabeth constituency on the Free National Movement ticket. Still to come on our news, the National Security Minister makes his case for re-election and members of the PLP do a giveaway in Grand Bahama. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back. Minister of National Security and MP for Mount Moriah making his case for why he should be re-elected as MP for the Mount Moriah constituency. Dames was among several cabinet ministers ratified this week to run for the FNM in the next election. Because I've lived up to almost everything or everything that I would have, uh, have uh, promised. When I first entered politics, didn't enter it uh, for Marvin Dames. I entered it because I saw the despair in Bahamas everywhere. And I felt that it was time for a change, a time to make a difference. You know, I grew up in a family where, where it was thought that if you make a promise to someone, you follow through on that. 
Earlier this week, the PLP ratified 18 candidates, while the FNM ratified 17 of its own. The PLP candidates featured several newcomers to politics, as well as some former cabinet ministers and MPs. The FNM also nominated a few newcomers, but mostly gave the green light to several cabinet ministers. How can we build community? How can we move from this position of dependency to empowerment? And we set out with a plan, and we have been working on that plan. We continue to work on that plan. We, are, we, 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 are, we have delivered in the area of the environment. We have de delivered on education. We have delivered uh, on entrepreneurship. We have um, delivered um, in, in our social programs. Uh, we continue to, 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 to help our people as best we can. And that's the most that you can ask for. Members of the PLP gave away food items to residents in Grand Bahama this weekend. PLP leader Philip Davis says the effort is a token of acknowledgement that the people in Grand Bahama are hurting. We in the Progressive Party recognize that the pain and suffering that the residents of Grand Bahama are going through and continue to go through, that we needed to bring some relief to them. And this is our sort of appreciation and and understanding and sensitivity to the need that they have and we just hope that we bring some relief. It's not it's not all that it's not all I know that they would need, but it's some it is some token of what we can do for them. Dozens receive food boxes in the drive through giveaway. One resident express gratitude for the give back. I feel it's very good. I think it's very important that the organization could step out so boldly in a time like this to support the community. Uh, hope that everybody get the message out uh, right, accordingly on, and come out and receive the box and just give a blessing to not just the PLP but give a blessing to God because it's God who has inspired them to be so grateful to give back to community in a time like this. When our news comes back from the break, do you like french fries? Unfortunately I do too. Christina Dragovic is going to tell us about the hottest fries in town just in time for the Super Bowl. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and for football fans, it means you may already have a delicious spread laid out. An entrepreneur is creating designer comfort food with customers in mind. Christina Dragovich tells us more. If you're a French fry lover, you're going to want to listen up. There's a new fry in town. I'm making first a Philly cheesesteak fries. Not a Philly cheesesteak sandwich, a Philly cheesesteak fries. Raquel Roll launched her business, Fries with Benefits, on National French Fry Day last July. Roll was a hotel manager who was left without a job as hotels in the country remained closed. But once the idea came to her, Roll says she got to work. Hmm, what should I do to try and make some money? So then the idea came with fries. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves fries. It's universal. <laughs> it's universal. Um, it's so many things that you can do with it. I had zero experience with culinary other than cooking at home for my family and friends. So it was a new experience and basically I'm a self, what they call a self-taught chef. With top sellers like the Philly cheesesteak fries and conch parmesan loaded fries, Roll says she uses local produce and special sauces in all of her recipes. All of our sauces are actually made in-house, of course, with the exception of the ranch and the blue cheese dressing. Um, my sister basically is the creator, the creator of the sauces. In less than a year, Roll has built a base of loyal customers on Facebook and Instagram who are eager to try and create new combinations. We have so many creative customers with the different add-ons that we have. Like, so many different things. We even had people eat outside. Like, they, they're just so excited. They can't wait to leave, so they end up eating in our driveway. So this lady wanted sour cream, um, caramelized onions, caramelized mushrooms, um, and this is on a shrimp, um, jalapenos, a bunch of different stuff. 
she she basically she built her own fry and we, we like to get creative in the kitchen she faced some hurdles growing her business during the pandemic but she encourages other bahamians who lost their jobs to follow their passions i want to get other hoteliers who may have a business idea but may be afraid to get out and step out on a limb and invest in their business i'm not in the hotel now i don't know where the lord is going to lead me but right now he's firing me up with these fries no matter how you slice it, Fries with Benefits has a flavor for every palate. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. An entrepreneur makes a donation to a children's home. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. An entrepreneur who came up with a special feminine hygiene product made a donation to the Elizabeth Estates Children's Home. Meredith Johnson is the co-founder of Women's Haven, an organic feminine care company. Earlier this week, Johnson made a donation of some of her company's products to the Elizabeth Estates Children's Home. She says she was motivated by her past work with the care home. I used to, um, I thought Miss Gray remembers me, but about three or four years ago, I used to come here on, the, on, the, on Saturdays and help tutor the kids because they were looking for, they did tutoring, and it was just a way of me giving back. It was nothing that no one asked me to do. It was myself and one of my friends, and it's just, it keeps you grounded. And I wanted to do something for them because I haven't been able to come on Saturdays anymore because I work on those Saturdays, so this was something I could do. The PLP's nominee for Elizabeth in the next election was also on hand for the donation. Jobeth Kobe Davis says when she heard about the product, she was impressed. I encouraged her to make it a little bit more uh, public that she, as a Bahamian, is a part of this company because one of the things that I've been hearing throughout the COVID pandemic was the expense and the cost of something that is essential for us women. And, and I wanted to champion having some of the taxes removed off of sanitary napkins for women because that's an essential that we use continuously on a monthly basis. 14 girls currently reside at the home. Administrator Ray Nairn says it was heartwarming to see a past volunteer still thinking about the children. He says the children have had limited exposure to the outside world during the pandemic. He says people who want to take the children out can reach out to, so, to social services. We take them out uh, as a group. Okay, so it's usually um, group outings and it's no um, isolated going out or of the sort. There's also the opportunity for um, mentors to come in, you know, when we're out of the COVID you know, pandemic area and um, mentors can come in and they can sign on to social services to come and take them out, spend time with the family and then bring them back. And of course, their own families can come and take them on out. Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. To catch our news on the go, download the Rev Go Play app. On behalf of the entire news, I'm Jared Higgs. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.